Today, I'm gonna to show you how I built this really cool firewood storage shed using real simple materials. Of course, I figured out a way to complicate things with some fun joinery. But don't worry, we are still gonna have fun. But what I love about this design is that not only are the shelves eye-catching, they serve a purpose. You can store your big logs down at the bottom, medium in the sides, and the small logs and twigs down at the top. And you can get at these separately at any time you want, which is something that I've always struggled with when I put my firewood in a big, stupid pile. The big logs are always at the bottom where I can't get to them, and all the small logs are at the top. Check this out. <laughs> I am so organized. Makes me look like I've got my shit together. <laughs> so let's get this project started and let's make something cool. All right, I'm gonna start this build off by cutting the four four by four legs to length and also going to cut that angle at the tops of each post. Now I didn't do a very steep angle on this roof. I uh, just did six and a half degrees, just enough to get the water to run off the top and add a little bit of visual interest. Now I'm just going to rough cut the styles. Well, at this point, we could just simply join these pieces together with some simple pocket hole joinery, which you absolutely could if you wanted to. But I love to make things more complicated. So I thought we would do something a little bit more fun. I thought we could do some really fun joinery and I wanted to do my very best Dusty Lumberco impression. If you don't know who Dusty is, you have to check out his YouTube channel, Dusty Lumberco. He has the most oddly satisfying content that has to do with some fun wood joinery that you've ever seen. So even though I don't have the tools that he has, I figured I'd take a shot at it anyway today. But uh, please, do me a favor, do not subscribe to my channel today, subscribe to his. But in order to get this done, we are going to have to have some very sharp chisels. It just so happens that a company called Empower sent me this awesome side-by-side diamond-plated sharpening station. Empower is not sponsoring this video, but they did send me this unit for free. I've been using it for several months now, and I absolutely love it. If you don't have a sharpening station set up yet, this is the way to go because it makes everything so much easier and compact and it comes with everything you need. It even comes with a carrying case. Not that you're gonna be going mobile with this, but I love having a place to store this and store the things that come with it. Uh, it comes with three different grits, 300, 600, and 1200 grit, but it also comes with these three leather straps, which go up to 1800, 2500, and 5000 grit. This will get you a mirror polish on these bad boys. It comes with three different wax grits to coat the leather straps with. It also comes with a lapping fluid and this eraser, which I believe is to clean either the straps or the diamond plates. But this couldn't be easier to use. You start off with the 300 grit, work your way up. Then after you've got your bevel set, then you would add these leather straps to the top. You coat them with the wax that's provided. Then you do like 10, 20 strokes tops on each strop and you're gonna get a mirror finish. Just for the fun of it, I wanted to see if I could save this really cheap chisel that I would use to chisel at concrete and this really cheap planer that uh, I had hit several nails and screw heads on. Obviously, I had to reset the bevel with a grinder first. They both work like a dream now. Now again, I want to be very clear, Empower is not sponsoring this video and there is no affiliate link so I am not making a dime. This is just a really great tool that came my way and I wanted to share it with you. But Cynthia, the big boss over at Empower, not only was she gracious enough to give you guys 20% off, she also wants to give away two of these side-by-side -side sharpening jigs for free. Just email Cynthia with the email that she provided down in the description below and she's gonna randomly pick two winners. 
So thank you so much, Cynthia and Empower, and uh, back to the project and my really bad dusty lumber co impression. All right, next up is to cut the tenons on the top and bottom rails. You don't have to do this, but I marked out all of my tenons so that I cut it properly. But I'm gonna start off by plowing out all this material with a stacked dado blade set. With the bottom rail, they're going to be nice right angle cuts. But with the top rail, I am gonna have some six and a half degree angles on this. So don't forget to adjust for that. Right now, I am measuring back from here three and a half inches. And with a compass, I'm going to mark out this nice little design detail. Then, I'm going to take this over to the bandsaw, and I'm going to cut all this excess material off. Then I'm just going to finish it off with a belt sander. Then, while I'm at the bandsaw, I might as well rough out this notch. Uh, I very quickly decided that I did not want to cut this notch in the bandsaw, so I just tilted my stag dado blade set. Gonna run it real quick. While I've got the blade tilted, I'm gonna go ahead and run the notches in my middle braces as well. All right, while I still have my stack dado blade set up in the saw still, I'm gonna go ahead and run some notches in this top rail that runs the width of the project. Uh, I've already gone ahead and radius the ends with this little radius dress piece that I have on the other top rails. I do wanna point out that I have a notch on each end that points down to accept the rail. Then I also have two notches that face up to accept the two middle braces. Try not to forget that one because I almost did as I was laying them out. All right, the last bit of joinery we gotta deal with is I'm going to rough out this mortise for the tenon with this one inch Faustner bit. Um, be, be careful dealing with these long pieces. I've got this long piece supported at the other end here very well. When it comes to laying out the mortises on the top of the posts, I found it very helpful to have the already notched out and cut rail available to help me lay out all the mortises. That way my angle will come out exact. Then I can transfer this bottom line down to the bottom of this side mortise and again transfer it to the front. That way the angle will be dead on. <laughs> The problem I'm having right now is that Dusty actually has this awesome radial arm saw that will actually shift sideways and saw sideways, which would be very helpful to cut these mortises, but I don't have that. So I've got to think of a way to hog out all this material safely and somewhat accurately. All right, so this is what I came up with. Um, gonna use a saw saw. <laughs> I know it sounds ridiculous. Probably 100 different ways to do what I'm doing. You do it however you want. Uh, I'm gonna do it this way. Um, I feel like I'm going to have a little bit better control of the angle that I have, that I'm dealing with this way. Um, and again, I'm just gonna stay away from the lines. That way I can clean it up with my nice sharp chisels. That's not working out at all how I wanted it to. Uh, it's getting too wobbly down at the bottom. So. I'm going to try to do this on the bandsaw. If that doesn't work out, then I'm going to hog this material out with a Faustner bit.
Yep. Go into the Forstner bit. Now I am switching up my stack Blado set to be 9 sixteenths because we are going to cut a groove right down the center of our post to accept the fence panels in the center when we put the frame together. Now I'm going to cut the cross members in the center of the storage shed. I'm going to rip them at an inch and a half. So we'll be able to get two cross members out of one board but make sure you save the cutoff because we're gonna need that later. Now for the fun part, we get to clean up all the mortise and tenons. And here is where our nice sharp chisel is going to come in real handy. Now I'm just going to cut the back and side panels out of just regular dog ear fence panels. Uh, got real lucky I was able to get a hold of some cedar natural tone. I really like the color of these. Right now I am just dry fitting everything together before I start gluing and nailing stuff together. I'm going to do this with the whole project just to make sure that everything fits nicely. Uh, this gap right here, that's going to close up once I space all these slats, so uh, don't worry. <laughs> as far as the back top and bottom brace, I'm just going to attach these with some pocket screws. And also because I am done with woodworking joinery. For now <laughs> and again if you don't want to do joinery on any of this and you just want to stick with simple pocket screws to join this whole project together and you still want those nice stylish corbels just make a bunch of small corbels three and a half inches by three and a half inches and then and just attach them with pocket screws you'll never know You remember that strip that I had you save when we ripped those one and a half inch by one and a half inch beams? It's gonna be I'm gonna attach a screw plate for the back strips or the, the back planks. Before I disassemble this, uh, I just want to lay out this cross brace here and just go ahead and mark my actual physical lay angles on the ends.
I think that looks really good. So now we're gonna tear it apart. I'm gonna sand all the pieces down and get rid of these rough edges. Uh, but before I put it all back together, I'm going to paint the parts. And I'll show you which paint I'm going to use for that. Uh, I'm gonna use this oil-based Rust-Oleum uh, Satin Black. And we'll see how that works out. Figure this is gonna be a lot more durable for the outside. I, I am leaving certain spots exposed where I know that I'm gonna want a raw surface for glue up. Now it's time for some actual assembly. This isn't necessary because the glue would hold this just fine with the tongue and grooves, but I'm gonna screw two three inch screws on the inside of each panel through each mortise and tenon just so I can get on with my assembly. Also using some quarter inch spacers which I made out of five gallon paintster sticks. They're a nice quarter inch thick and I just cut them into little inch and a half inch ish pieces for some shims. satisfying. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to drill four three inch screws, two on each side into the tongue and groove, just, just to hold it together while I assemble things. As far as the slats are concerned, I'm just simply going to tack these in place with a couple of inch and a quarter brad, brad nails. Now I'm gonna assemble the rest of this outside, otherwise I would not be able to get this out of the shed. <laughs> Anyway, for the most part, I am attaching these with uh, three inch decking screws. I'm also going to add this middle brace to support the planks that I'm going to have along the back wall. In fact, speaking of which, before I go ahead and install the rest of the overhead bracing, I'm going to go ahead and install the, the back planks, uh, make things a little easier on me. Using an inch and a quarter decking screws on these guys, 
and again using quarter inch spacers to space each panel. Here's, here, here's the money shot right here. Oh, uh, that, that's satisfying. <laughs> Dusty Lumberco, eat your heart out. By the way, this morning I uploaded my, 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 uh, my best Dusty Lumberco impression short. And within, I think, 10 minutes, Dusty actually commented on my Instagram short. I was blown away. I, had, I did not think he was going to see it, let alone comment on it. So, thanks, Dusty. You're the man! I'm, I don't need to put a screw in here, but I'm just going to screw this uh, three-inch decking screw right through the center of this joint. Just for funsies. It makes me feel better. Middle braces are just getting two and a half inch screws pocket hold in the back so that way the screw doesn't blow out the back. Now I'm gonna install one of the angle shelves. I'm gonna install the back bracing first, then the front. Now I'm just going to attach the braces that go perpendicular to these braces. Uh, again, using two and a half inch decking screws with some pocket hole joinery and some glue. You also could totally do some half lap joints and do two solid pieces and just half lap them in the middle, but I just chose not to. Now it's time to install the shelf slats and I'm just going to use inch and a quarter decking screws on this as well. That's it for the uh, shelf slats, but uh, before I move on to the next step, I'm noticing that these exposed cut sides uh, are sticking out like a sore thumb. So luckily they sell cedar natural tone in small pint sizes. So I can just touch this up. Otherwise, that would have drove me nuts. And now for the uh, piece of resistance. The metal roof. Bet you guys didn't know that I could speak Spanish. Now I'm just gonna cut three panels of corrugated metal roofing. The beauty about this is that you'll be able to get three sheets out of one eight foot sheet of corrugated metal roofing. This is the absolute least fun part of this project, but it's got to be done. You got to file away at these real sharp cut edges because they will cut you. Make sure to wear gloves. <laughs> I don't know how I'm going to do this. Anyway, installing the panels is going to be fairly simple. These uh, two braces over here are going to provide plenty of good place to set our screws. I'm going to set the middle panel first, but I'm not going to screw it in just yet because I want to set and overlap the side panel before I screw it in. And I also want the lips to overhang by one inch. 
As far as the screws are concerned, uh, I'm gonna use these uh, three quarter inch self tapping uh, sheet metal screws. And they've got these big wafer heads on the top. They actually do make special screws for sheet metal roofing that have little rubber grommets already in, pre-installed on them so that way you don't get any, any leaks in the hole that you just made in the, in the roof. I'm not going to bother because one, this is what I have on hand and two, I really don't care if I have little tiny leaks in a project like this. Also, make sure you install the screws in the low part of the valley. If you install on the top part of the valley, it will crush the corrugated metal. Make sense? And that's it. It's all done. The only thing I have left to do is to put all that firewood in there. It's got to be done. Again, what I love most about this design is the organization. I can't tell you how much more organized I feel right now. I can get at all the small pieces and the big pieces at the same time. I don't have to unbury the big pieces that are always at the bottom of my stupid piles. And it looks great too. But that's it. I'm going to have plans and dimensions available down in the description below. Thanks for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one.